Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit more shorter term technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, but we're also going to be asking the important questions. Like, why is a washer called a washing machine, but a dryer is not called a drying machine? Hmm. Well, more than that, we're also going to be discussing Bitcoin technical analysis in the new Bitcoin bull market, and we're going to be asking the also important question, what do we need to do to update our technical analysis for the Bitcoin bull market so that we can then have accurate technical analysis to guide our trades now that Bitcoin has gotten above $6,000 and that we have officially confirmed a Bitcoin bull market? Because I think there's a lot of things that I have implemented, but I'm not totally sure you guys have because I haven't talked about it a whole lot. So that's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. If you guys do enjoy today's video, if you do enjoy the technical analysis and the things I'm going to teach here, then make sure you smash that like button. It does help out the channel when you do so. And if you're not already subscribed and you haven't already hit that notification bell, guys, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Go down below this video. Go ahead and do that right now. I would be very appreciative. But before we dive on into it, I do want to mention, guys, that there is now going to be a sale running on the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. This sale will be July 2019. The coupon code will be in the description down below, and it'll be a $40 off code for the entire academy. If you guys want to learn how to do cryptocurrency technical analysis now that Bitcoin Bitcoin has entered a Bitcoin bull market and that Bitcoin has gotten above $6,000 that there are massive gains both in the longing market and the shorting market happening as of late and you want to learn how to profit in these markets the cryptocurrency technical analysis academy is a fantastic place to do so we'll discuss that more at the end of the video but anyway guys without much further ado let's go ahead and dive right on into it I want to start by doing a little bit of Bitcoin technical analysis and getting us caught up with what's happened here over the last 24 hours or so. If you watched yesterday's video, and based on the view count, you probably did, Bitcoin saw a very strong rally right here, but it didn't really last. And then Bitcoin saw a moderately strength rally over here. And Bitcoin in both of these rallies, unfortunately, was not able to return back to yearly high up here around $14,000. And now that we've done that, we have a high, we have a lower high, we have an even lower high, and we have an even lower high, if you want to count that one, down here. Bitcoin is very obviously in a downtrend. With that said, Bitcoin does actually have higher lows. Right down here, we have a low, and right down here, we have a higher low. But that is not necessarily going to last, and if you draw this out, honestly, this is more like an equivalent low. It's more like a double bottom forming at the moment that I think is going to develop here over the next couple of hours. It's funny, in yesterday's video, Bitcoin was trading right here, and I was talking about how Bitcoin is probably going to break bearish out of this, and I was overwhelmingly bearish, and before the video even got finished editing, let alone uploading, Bitcoin did break to the downside. It was literally about 10 minutes after I finished recording, Bitcoin did that. And from there, Bitcoin has been trending to the downside. It came up and tested resistance at $11,400 again, of course, but we have eventually started falling down. We're currently trading around 10.5. And guys, I don't want to get too much into predictions on what Bitcoin is going to do here. And the reason for that is because this is the first major correction of this Bitcoin bull market. And we're talking about our technical analysis and what we want to learn from our technical analysis during this Bitcoin bull market. And this is one of the things I want to step back and not really trade, not really predict here, but I want to learn from. And that's very valuable advice. It's not always that you want to be just diving into the market and making trades and calls. Sometimes when you're not totally sure of something, the best course of action is to step back, look at the market and learn from it rather than trying to make money from it. Even the most experienced technical analysts in the world still have an infinite amount to learn about these markets. This is a thing that you can master like anything else, but even masters need to learn. And the reason that I'm stepping back and kind of just watching this market right now and not actually making any of those trades, Dre Lee in the chat over on Discord just asked me if I was going to put that other $3,000 into Bitcoin, like I said, and I'm about to answer him after I finish recording that no, I've actually held off and I'm not going to put the other $3,000 into my investing portfolio just yet. I want to wait a little bit and see exactly what Bitcoin is doing here, because this is the first major pullback of the year. Bitcoin has not had a major pullback during this Bitcoin bull market. Bitcoin's down 25% from its yearly high. We did see some pullbacks, but this was only about 15%. That wasn't even over 20. It wasn't a major pullback. And guys, this is what I want to discuss in this video, and this is why you clicked on this video. It's because during the Bitcoin bull market, you have to shift your compass to a more bullish direction. You have to shift your compass to a more bullish inclination. If you guys know anything about how to use actual compasses, depending on where you are in the world, you have to shift that compass needle, and I'm not getting into all the terminology and everything, but you have to adjust for the fact that magnetic north is not in the same place as geographic north. You have to adjust for a couple of degrees. So you can use a compass to find generally where north is, but if you don't have some idea of where you are on the planet and you don't have some idea of where magnetic north is at that year because it actually moves quite a bit, 
and then you're not going to be able to find exact true geographic north and you're going to be off so if you want to go 100 miles north you might miss whatever you're trying to get to by 20 miles and that's an important thing in Bitcoin as well because if you don't adjust for the fact that we are now in a bull market and you don't adjust your technical analysis to understand that we are now in a bull market you're sometimes going to be making bearish calls when you should have been making bullish calls and that's why the first couple of months of a bull market and the first couple of months of a bear market are very important learning times it's very important that you learn as much about the market and the methods that the market uses the the uh, the, the kind of energy in the market what the energy what the what the market is trying to do in the first couple of months so you actually get a feeling for how the market moves a good example of that is what we're seeing right now and that's kind of why I'm zoomed out and watching this move and not really making any trades right now I did talk about in a couple videos ago how there was a good trade right here that was a good trade I will not back down on that but as for the rest of this pullback I'm not making a whole lot of trades here even though I have some in mind honestly guys this is a descending triangle pattern now these normally break bearish this gives me kind of the feeling that we should break below ten thousand dollars but I'm not making a trade based on that because that is what I would say if Bitcoin was in a bear market we're not in a bear market anymore, guys. We're in a bull market. So there's a much higher chance, actually, that Bitcoin doesn't do the bearish thing. It comes down here, tests 10,000, and then bounces bullish. Sometimes something that Bitcoin would do in a bear market, like, you know, breaking bearish out of a descending triangle pattern. I don't know where we could have possibly seen that happen before. Sometimes the bearish thing is not going to happen in a bull market. And sometimes in a bear market, the bullish thing is not going to happen because Bitcoin is acting more in the favor of the direction of the market in general. What that means is that Bitcoin tends to be more bullish in the bull market, more bearish in the bear market. Right now we're in a bull market and we've only been in one for three or four months. So I think a lot of us have leftover bearish sentiment from the Bitcoin bear market that we're bringing on with us into this new bull market. And I'm worried that we're going to make more bearish calls than we otherwise should be because Bitcoin is now in a bull market and it's going to ignore some of those bearish technicals. I think I'm guilty of this. I think everyone is guilty of this. It's not a matter of who's guilty. What's a matter of is, is making sure that you're not missing out on trades and that you're not missing out on buying opportunities, that you're not trying to put your buy targets too low because you think that Bitcoin is going to just crash through the floor now that we've entered a bull market. Now, I do want to add one caveat. That doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't be bearish. Bitcoin very well can be bearish. If you watched the live stream about four days ago, Bitcoin crashed 20% in three minutes. Just because Bitcoin is in a bull market now does not by any stretch of the imagination mean that Bitcoin is invulnerable and that Bitcoin cannot be bearish. Of course it can. In fact, it's very healthy when Bitcoin is. But instead of saying something like, okay, Bitcoin is going to go to $6,000, we might want to say something like Bitcoin is going to want to go to $8,000. Those are not exact numbers. Do not apply that to technical analysis. I'm giving examples. But instead of being as much bearish as we were in the bear market, we, want, we might want to be a little bit more bullish, put our buy-in targets a little higher, put our price targets a little higher because Bitcoin is in a bull market and it's very obviously in a very strong bull market. We've never seen the beginning of a bull market act quite the way that this one has. So guys, that kind of brings us back to the technical analysis portion of today's video. Where is Bitcoin going here? Like I said, I'm going to kind of stand back and watch this market. I'm not going to put any trades in here. And honestly, guys, if you're in the same boat as me, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a very good idea sometimes just to stand back watch the market, not trade the market, and try to learn from the market so that in the future you can actually profit from the market. If there's ever any doubt in your mind as to whether or not a trade is going to be profitable, or at least that that trade is going to be safe, don't make the trade. Don't make the trade if you think that there's a risk of you losing a lot of money or you not knowing what you're doing. That's what we talk about in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy with risk and reward and how to plan and execute profitable trades. Every single trade I do has a small stop loss. It has a very large margin for profit. It has low risk and it has high reward. Those four names, those four words are things that we discuss in these two videos. And it's very important that you understand those concepts, which is why we do have the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It's very important that you understand the concepts of risk and reward and profit margin and loss potential. Those kind of concepts when you're making trades are very important. And it doesn't matter what kind of trade you're making. It matters how you set up the trade. It and it doesn't matter what the market is doing to, for those four factors. It matters what trades you decide to take. You want to make sure you take low risk trades with high profit margins. That all being said, I don't know if I can do that confidently in this market right here. I'm not. A, I'm not a. I, I, I'm guys. I haven't been doing technical analysis for 20 years. I've been in the market for a long time. I've been working in these markets every single day since I started, and I make a video every single day doing technical analysis. I know what I'm talking about, but I have places that I need to grow also, and I'm not a hundred percent. I'm pretty confident on what's going to happen here, but I'm not a hundred percent confident on what's going to happen here. I think that Bitcoin is at least going to come down here and test 10,000. Normally when Bitcoin is in free fall like it is and there's no obvious levels of support, it's going to do that. With that said,
said, if we do look out here at the daily chart, I do believe we're getting close to 20 exponential moving average. So perhaps we're going to bounce off of this. Perhaps Bitcoin has set a bottom in on the 20 EMA. But guys, I think Bitcoin's either going to come down somewhere to 10.4 down to $10,000. Somewhere in that zone, Bitcoin's going to get support. I think we're pretty close. I think it'd be dangerous to short right now because there's not a whole lot of profit potential. And there is a very large margin of loss because Bitcoin could very easily bounce here. And honestly, guys, there is a small part of me that thinks Bitcoin's going below $10,000. That part of me may grow as we approach $10,000, if we approach $10,000. And if that part of me grows, I will keep you guys updated. I think that there is a chance that Bitcoin falls below 10 k but we're going to have to wait and see on that. Time will tell. But guys, the main point of today's video is you need to make sure that you're adjusting your technical analysis compass so you're not too bullish and you're not too bearish. If you find yourself making too many bullish calls and you're always getting it wrong, be a little bit more bearish. If you always find yourself th that you're being a little bit too bearish and then you need to make more bullish calls, then be a little bit more bullish. Adjust the inclination to your trading. Adjust the inclination to your actual uh, technical analysis. Sometimes you'll find that, you'll, that you think Bitcoin is this bullish or this bearish and it's not. It's more bullish or more bearish or less bullish or less bearish than you thought it was. And then you can finally, uh, once you've done that, you finally have a little bit better understanding of what you're doing with technical analysis. That's just one of many different facets in technical analysis. So I hope you guys get, did get some good value out of this video. I hope you did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't already. We upload cryptocurrency technical analysis videos every single day here on the channel. And the couple, what, the like nearly 25,000 of you guys on the channel, which is absolutely mind blowing to me. Thank you, every single one of you. You guys seem to be getting uh, some good value out of the channel. And I hope that continues. But guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up. But before we do, I do want to mention the sale on the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. Like I said, if you use the coupon code JULY2019 down in the description down below, you'll get $40 off the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. Within the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, there are 33 videos covering nearly 10 hours of content, teaching you everything from the very basics of technical analysis, like how to set up a trading view account if you don't know how to do that, all the way up through much more advanced concepts like a game of statistics and probabilities, risk and reward, how to plan and execute profitable trades. All three of these kind of go together in setting up trades like I talked about. Mass psychology, which is basically understanding the driving forces of these markets. These are not mathematical equations that we're looking at here. These are the manifestations of the machinations of the people working in these markets. When Bitcoin goes up, it's because the mass psychology of the market is bullish. When the markets go down, it's because the mass psychology is bearish. And therefore, you need to have a good understanding of that. That's what we dive into in that video. Bull and bear markets, that's some pretty basic stuff. Market structure, that's a little bit more advanced. It's also very important. Gut feeling is one of my favorite videos in the entire academy because a lot of people don't talk about that gut, that feeling you get in your gut. What do you feel like is going to happen? It's not just looking at the technical indicators and saying, okay, MACD just crossed bearish right here, as you can see. Okay, Bitcoin, MACD crossed bearish, so Bitcoin clearly must be going into a downtrend. Well, if you don't factor in all the other technical indicators and you don't factor in your prior experience, which I'm putting the label on as gut feeling, you're not going to be making valid trades. It's a very important idea. It's a very important feeling to listen to your gut. Don't listen to your heart when you're trading. Listen to your brain and your gut. You don't want to trade based off emotion. That's not what I'm saying. You need to be trading based off of your experience. That is what I'm saying. That's very important. That's what we dive into in that video. Guys, I can go through all the videos, but I think if you read the comment section down below, the people in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, if they decide to comment, will tell you how much they enjoy it. We've had nearly 700 people go through CT2A, and I will be honest with you. We've had about five refunds. Let me go ahead and tell you what those were. Each and every single one of those refunds that people have requested, I gave them I gave it to them right away. It wasn't me saying, okay, hey, why do you want a refund? Or I, one of them I did say, hey, you might be, want to do this because it'll better your technical analysis. But I pretty much just gave them the refund. You know why they wanted a refund? Each and every single one of them told me. Jeb, it had nothing to do with the academy. The academy is great. I'm just not ready to be a trader yet. If you're not ready to learn these markets, if you're not ready to trade in these markets, don't join the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. I will give you a refund if you want to, but don't do it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your effort trying to learn these markets if you don't want to do it. If you're not the right person to make money in these markets, then you're not the right person. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you believe that you are the right person and that you believe that you do actually want to profit in these markets and you do think that it's possible because I guarantee you it is possible 
the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy is a great place to start. Like I said, we've had nearly 700 people join the Academy. Never once have I ever had a request for a refund from someone who said, Jeb, the Academy sucks, I want my money back. We've had nearly 700 people go through the course. Never once has anyone ever emailed me saying that. Not once. I am proud of that, and I'm very happy with the Academy we've created. Every single time I talk about this, people tell me in the comment section down below how much they enjoy the Academy. A pretty large, a pretty large percentage of my subscribers are now in the course, and they they do seem to be enjoying it. To wrap the video up, guys, if you are in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, what I want you to do is go down into the comments section down below and tell people what your honest-to-God opinion is on CT2A. If you're in the course, tell me what you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Do you despise it? Or are you indifferent? I want your honest opinion. I don't want a good review. I don't want a bad review. I want to hear what you guys have to say so the people that are watching this video for the first time can have an honest review of the course before they go and buy it. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I do hope you did enjoy today's video, and I do hope you pawned on that question of why a dryer is not called a drying machine. Guys, I also wonder why a building after it's built is not called a built and still called a building when it's not in the process of being built anymore. That's very confusing to me as well, guys. The English language is weird. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up. I do hope you guys did enjoy today's video. So that is going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.